Today we are going to discuss about the three major discoveries that lead to the birth of modern biotechnology. Is biotechnology a new technology? By definition, biotechnology is a controlled use of biological agents such as microorganisms or cellular components for beneficial use. Biotechnology is not a modern technology or new technology. Making of curd from, from milk, we are using a number of microbes in wine, improving industry, cheese making. These are all biotechnological processes that we have been practicing from time immemorial. Now let us look into some terms in order to get the perspective of modern biotechnology. Genetic engineering, gene cloning, GMOs, cotton rice, PT cotton, genetically modified food, foods, vaccines, drugs. These are all terms that we come across in newspapers either of controversial or some uh, beneficial or some beneficial aspects. The one thing in common in all these above terms or products is that gene manipulation is the basis. And gene manipulation is the basis of modern biotechnology. Modern biotechnology was basically an answer for this question. Can we manipulate genes in an organism? Now we are going to discuss the three major discoveries that lead to the birth of modern biotechnology or genetic engineering. These are the three major discoveries. First is the discovery of restriction enzymes. Second, the making of the first recombinant DNA molecule. Third one is the successful incorporation and propagation of the recombinant DNA molecule inside the host. First, the discovery of restriction enzyme. It was Arbor who proposed the existence of restriction enzyme in E. coli. Later, Smith purified restriction enzymes in E. coli and Nathan applied that restriction enzymes in genetic engineering. Now, going into detail, the first discovery that is the discovery of a restriction enzyme. A restriction enzymes are enzymes that can make internal cuts within speed sequences called restriction sequences or restriction sites. Here, we have taken a restriction enzyme as example that is eco R1, E. coli taken that is restriction enzyme present in E. coli R1 strain. You can see that this restriction enzyme is capable of making a cut in T specific sequence which is called as recognition sequence that is GAATDC. Whenever these enzyme uh, come across this sequence it is capable of causing a cut and we will be getting two fragments. You can see right here and these frag these are called as sticky ends you can see single single standard unpaired region and whenever we are incorporating our gene of interest our gene of interest will be having a tail that is complementary to this sequence so that it will naturally form hydrogen bonds. Why the term restriction enzyme? Restriction enzymes are naturally present in bacteria that is meant for meant as, meant as a defense mechanism against uh, viral DNA or RNA. A uh, virus upon attack it will inject DNA or RNA and these foreign DNA or RNA will be cleaved by restriction enzymes present in bacteria actually restricting the viral genome replication inside bacteria. Now the second major discovery that was Paul Berg's gene splicing experiment. He was the first one to develop uh, the recombinant molecule. Uh, he used a vector which is called as SV40 vector and he used the restriction enzyme eco R1 to make a cut in that vector. And later he could incorporate a fragment from lambda phage into that vector. You can see right here lambda phage fragment has been integrated and this was the first recombinant DNA molecule. And there will be a single standard nick at this region and this was sealed by enzyme, sealing enzyme that is lysis. This experiment, gene splicing experiment marked the birth of genetic engineering. Paul Berg was often regarded, is often regarded as the father of modern biotechnology. Now the third experiment that was conducted by Cohen and Boyer, uh, they successfully in incorporated a recombinant DNA molecule into a bacterium. In the first step, they made a recombinant DNA molecule, a vector, they used a vector PSC101, to that their gene of interest was incorporated and uh, later they transformed that recombinant DNA molecule into a host that is E. coli, a bacterium. Uh, from there, this recombinant DNA molecule is successfully replicated inside the host, later further propagated into daughter colonies and practical colonies. Later, R.S. Swanson and Eng and Reponer had a meeting with Boyer regarding the commercial feasibility of recombinant DNA technology. 
The discussion ended with the decision to start a new generation therapeutic company called Genentech. Many scientists at that time were doubtful about the commercial feasibility of recombinant DNA technology. But scientists at Genentech proved their detractors wrong by discovering the first recombinant growth hormone somatostatin E. coli in very next year, 1977. Now as you know there are thousands of biotech industries all around the globe and has a turnover of many billions of dollars a year around the globe. Thanks for watching.